The first shot of World War III was fired yesterday as the United States decided to assassinate the top general of Iran. This was considered the number two guy in the whole country. This is literally a nightmare situation. I imagine if Iran assassinated our number one general in the morning, we would be at war that evening. This Iranian general headed covert operations and was an icon to the Iranian people. Please note that he was traveling as a diplomat at the invitation of the Iraqi government. His movements were official and not secret. This assassination is an abomination. Only people with criminal minds commit these kinds of acts. Gerald Salente warned in his Trends Journal of this on June 15, 2017 trend alert, under the title, Iran War Coming. World War III, Market Crash. Get ready for the next war. It may be the war to end all wars and much of civilization, said Salente. Our foreign policy vacillates between insanity and nausea. Funny how when they killed the general oil prices went up, and the fat cats get richer. And Lockheed Martin stock jumped like it always does just before the war. We are going to see oil prices spike above $100 a barrel. If that happens, it's going to crash the global economies and equity markets. They will hit us where it hurts, oil and the economy. The great Nostradamus predicted that the great or ultimate war would begin in Persia, which is modern day, Iran. I don't know what weapons World War III will be fought with, but World War IV will be fought with sticks, and Stone said, Einstein. The black swan is starting to reveal itself. Welcome to the Atlantis Report. Less than 24 hours after a US drone surprisingly killed the top Iranian military general, Qasem Soleimani, resulting in equity markets whining all over the world in fear over Iranian reprisals, and potentially, World War III, the US has started round two. Reuters and various other social media sources reported that U.S. airstrikes targeting Iraq's popular mobilization unit's umbrella grouping of Iran-backed Shiite militias near Camp Taji north of Baghdad, have killed six people and critically wounded three. From their side, the Russian general staff has reinforced the air defenses for Russians at the Iranian nuclear reactor complex at Busha, on the Persian Gulf, according to sources in Moscow. At the same time, Iran has allowed filming of the movement of several of its mobile S-300 air defense missile batteries to the south, covering the Iranian coastline of the Persian Gulf and the Gulf of Oman. More secretly, elements of Russian military intelligence, electronic warfare, and command and control advisors for Iran's air defense systems have been mobilized to support Iran against U.S. and allied attacks. The range of the new surveillance extends well beyond the S-300 strike distance of 200 kilometers and covers U.S. drones and aircraft bases on the Arabian Peninsula, as well as U.S. warships in and under the Persian Gulf and off the Gulf of Oman. Early warning of U.S. air and naval launched attacks has now been cut below the old 4-6 to six minute Iranian threshold. Counter-firing by the Iranian armed forces has been automated from attack warning and target location. This means that if the U.S. is detected launching a swarm of missiles aimed at Iran's air defense sites, uranium mines, reactors, and military operations bunkers. Iran will launch its own swarm of missiles at the U.S. firing platforms, as well as a Saudi and other oil production sites, refineries, and pipelines, as well tankers in ports and underway in the Gulf. The U.K., too, has just announced a massive recruitment drive for their military, something is afoot. These maniacs don't care, because if it goes bad, they got all those underground shelters to hide in like the rats they are, more death, more destruction, more misery, what a future. The United States is the number one producer of military equipment in the world, which is the largest single export industry in the USA. There is no more profitable industry than war. The banksters wanted a war with Iran, and it will happen. It's always money and power, the elite rule. So many suffer and die for the agenda of a few that have no empathy or compassion for anyone other than themselves. My father fought in the Pacific in World War II and understood after the war how they were used and abused by the leadership of this country. Hard times ahead once again. War is a racket indeed. The banksters need a big war to take people's eyes away from the true story about their criminal activities. America is just a hired gun for the elites. We are like the old Western TV series. Have gun will travel to the highest bidder. Trump may need a war distraction to hide the fact the economy is imploding. The Democrats talk a good game, but they won't do shit to prevent it because they're in on the fix, too. Who better to blame than Iran?
War has always been a seductive distraction, and the goal has been Iran from day one. Afghanistan is the left flank. Iraq is the right flank. Iran in the center. All wars are bankers' wars. Only they profit. And don't forget depopulation, high on the agenda for years now. America needs this war to survive. The yield curve inverted twice last year, the elite knows the greatest depression is coming and that it will cause foreign nations to stop using the US dollar as the reserve currency. Without reserve currency status, the United States will collapse overnight, so this war with Iran is a last-ditch effort to survive a little longer. Collapse is inevitable, but the elite probably needs more time to move their assets to New Zealand. The neocons would love to see an attack in America. Imagine how their budgets will balloon and all the shortcuts the judges will shrug off, even in direct defiance of the Constitution. Never mind the separation of powers that requires the Congress and Senate to approve war. They are now free to hoax and terrorize the citizens for fun and profit. Sweet Jesus, Americans have become dullards. My biggest disappointment is the court system. The entire thing is compromised by scum like Epstein. Either way, we may see what it is like when they make a true martyr out of someone who actually has the respect of the people and isn't another puppet of one regime or another. This is going to start moving much faster. If World War III starts, then the world ends, nuclear fallout will encircle the globe, and the planet will become sterile, waiting for the evolution of new species to arise millions of years later, all that we leave behind just to become dust without a trace of our pitiful existence. Unfortunately, there will be no peace, and the Great Flood has begun, the same flood as in the time of Noah. Over 5 billion people are going to die in this war that has just begun. The USA will be defeated after fighting a false war for 27 years, according to Bible prophecy. China, Russia, Iran and North Korea will be the winners, and China will be the new superpower economy. Trump is the final president of the USA, and Obama was the last full-term president. None in his right mind will comply with such escalation. Trump, on the other hand, gave them whatever and whenever the banksters are asking for. In fact, they are tired of winning. Such aggravation of situations in such an extremely hostile manner further proof the extent to which the controllers are dying for war, even if it means a wider regional or global world war. Actually, Soleimani has been in their crosshair when he managed Syria and Iraq to defeat ISIS and getting strengthened the resistance fighting terrorism their enemy brought about to them. The killing of General Soleimani and his compatriots alone reveals the agenda as war. Under normal world, such blatant killing would have caused an all-out war to perpetrators, but the problem is America is too big to take on without one being getting destroyed. The world is being run by sociopaths everywhere, where is the solution? The old system needs to die so we can build a new one based on peace and other principles. The old system isn't going to die without a fight. It looks ugly, no matter what happens. The financial system has already failed, and we are about to see the crash of the century. Throw in a war for good measure, you'd better be red. The US is bankrupt, it needs a war, bombing these countries is crime against humanity and a war crime. Depressions are planned. Inflation is planned. Wars are planned. Workers and taxpayers exist to provide the monarchs all they desire. The central banks are privately owned and in business for personal profit only. They care only about increasing taxes, looting the treasury, rigging the markets, and robbing pensions and savers. Brainwashing is part of their business model thanks to their own mainstream media and CIA propaganda channels, which are included in this false programming. All to entice their valuable collateral you, to consume beyond their means. Then you hang on the hook of their fraudulent system. Hyperinflate the currency, and your asset becomes their property again. You'll be left behind with a huge debt and lost. It doesn't matter, whatever happens are simply the consequences of allowing evil to roam freely by the vast majority of Earth's population. Now at the end of a 12,000-year cycle, they are acting as the cornered animals that they are. This century will mark the beginning of the end of everything we know love and cherish. Don't fall for the war trap. Prepare yourselves for drastic long-term changes. No one is going to stop what is going to happen, and no one is going to see it coming because the fear of man-made misery is restricting the vision, and then, along with sheer of bright light. Violent shaking of the earth oceans and seas moving inland as everything we have built turns into rubble, and life perishes. Within 24 hours, everything we call civilization will be gone. 
The world will have changed beyond recognition, and once more, the human being, those who were lucky to survive, has been thrown back to its very roots of living a natural lifestyle in order to survive. Not the first time it has happened, nor will it be the last. We are too occupied with bullshit and ignoring the warnings and shooting the messengers. The world has never seen peace, for as long as there are people that are killed because of wars anywhere, there is no peace. Either we all have peace, or no one has it. We all have freedom, or no one has it. Next time think before you willingly choose between evil. There is no lesser evil as there is no better good. Evil is evil, and you cannot blame evil for its existence when you have allowed it to rise. Face the consequences. No one is innocent. We elect a president to drain the swamp and fix the economy, and he goes in and completely flips his stance on every issue, doesn't fix anything, and makes everything worse, business, as usual. Remember back in 2016 when Trump said he was gonna bring our boys home from the Middle East? Let me know in the comments section below what your thoughts are about this dangerous situation that is unfolding in the Middle East, and do you think that it will all lead to World War III? This was the Atlantis Report. Please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.